little boys and girls. It is Berlin Biker, and we are gonna go ride some Harley Davidsons. Harley motherfucking Davidsons. That's right. Um, I just left Berlin. I'm heading towards Potsdam, which is about a 35, 40 minute drive outside of Berlin, um, to the Harley Davidson of Potsdam dealership. There is a big, I believe two or three day, I don't know what you're doing. Two or three day event. I think it's three day event. Um, hosted by uh, Harley Davidson of Germany in Potsdam. And it's basically a giant party. A giant little come and ride and eat some hot dogs and drink some German beer. And then get on bikes that you don't own. It just sounds like a swell time. Well, I'm heading down there because I have never ridden a Harley Davidson. And this seems like the perfect opportunity to do so right so what first off i've never been a harley guy never ever ever been a harley guy i don't really find the attraction to hell half a ton motorcycles that are loud and obnoxious and blah 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 blah, blah. but there's something about harley that the more and more I think about it and the more and more they're in the news with Trump and all of the tariffs and where they're suffering because millennials aren't buying them, the more and more I'm interested in them. Why? Because as an American, I have a soft spot for them, right? They are an American born and bred company. How they started with two brothers and a friend who basically just wanted to start racing bikes and then bikes turned into motorcycles and then all the pain and suffering that they had to do to get this company off the ground and all the success they had and uh, manufacturing and racing and all of the turmoil they've had in the last 75 years it's all very very exciting and it's a cool story to tell if you know about it but now that they're suffering the past few years they're they're having a hard time getting people like me millennials who are into motorcycles to consider them you know it's easy for us to get wooed by bikes like the yamaha mt07 and the ducati scrambler and things like that and I, I kind of want to be part of this comeback story that is Harley Davidson. I want to... I kind of want to help them bring back the luster, right? I don't know if I can or how I could, but I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about how I could... I don't know. Reach out to, or reach out to Harley Davidson and just chat like, yo, this is what I want... This is how I think I could help you guys as a motorcycle vlogger and a photographer. You know, I am a young guy in Berlin with a big group of motorcycle friends and followers all across social and in real life. You know, maybe let's find a way to partner. Let's let's talk about this. What I got to get in that right lane but that's kind of my my daydream that i've been thinking about since i signed up for this little event i can't go right hmm. no that's back lane all good take the exit then keep left all right sorry my uh my directions are going on right now all right cool i'm doing that so Why, what am I gonna go ride when I get down there? Well, there is the Harley Davidson. What is it called? Oh, I'm forgetting it. Not Speedster, Roadster? Roadster. It is beautiful looking. Smaller bike, definitely Cafe Racer-esque. I've seen a few custom builds that are really dope. Um, and honestly, I think it's just, a, it looks more like a Thruxton competitor. It's the, I think it's the most sporty bike that Harley makes in my mind. It definitely is in their mind probably as well. But I'm interested in riding that. I wanna see how the performance of a bike that's 560 pounds actually is. 560 pounds is something stupid, like 300 and something kilos. It's, or 200 and something kilos. The bike ain't light. But I want to go ride that. Oh, hello. Cool hat. 
Um, but what else? I think it'd be cool just to try some of the more famous Harley models. The Fat Bob is a definitely one of them. I think the Sportster 883, the Sportster 1200, they have a, it's in the Sportster lineup. It's a smaller bike, but it's called like a Special 48 or 48 Special. There we go. And that's really cool. Short bike, um, a little, I wouldn't say aggressive handlebars or anything like that, but it just, it looks like it would be a good starting place to kind of build what you would want around it if you're into the smaller looking bikes that Harley makes. And what else? Oh, something that's kind of weird that I want to try is Harley is definitely known for their trikes. And I have never ridden a trike. A two wheel in the rear, one wheel in the front kind of bike. Well, I'm definitely, if they had one, I'm going to sign my ass up onto that and see what it's like to ride a couch. And it might be really nice. But that is, you're going to stop, both you. That's kind of where I'm going right now. So let's keep driving towards the Harley Davidson of Potsdam dealership right now. We're going to have to get gas before we do. And let's go have some fun on some good old American made power. All right, boys and girls, let's do this. Okay, so this place is like in the middle of nowhere. I feel like I just like drove through 20 neighborhoods, made a bajillion turns, and it's supposed to be up here on the right. So this kind of looks like a place where a dealership would be. I'm looking for the Harley Davidson. I see Polo, I see Harley. Oh, look at that, I found it. How exciting. All right, well, let's pull up. So I've officially made it to Harley Davidson in Potsdam. Um, I'm test riding two bikes, the 48 Special, photo on the screen now, and then the second bike is the bike that I came here to literally ride is the Roadster. Both I'm very excited for, very, very excited for. I took a little walk through the dealership and I actually found out that there is a Moto Guzzi, Perla Suzuki, and KTM dealer next door. It's not as large, but it definitely has a good selection. Oh, it also has a Royal Enfield, a bike I'm very interested in, is the Continental GT. So it's kind of fun to be here and see everything that I wanted to at once. Hopefully you guys can hear me over the sound of the group that's coming back right now. But let's go ride. as a reverse.
one thing that's really noticeable for me here is that I'm the youngest person here and I'm 29 years old and I'm easily the youngest person here. Um, if you remove the children, obviously, of the people there, yeah. The next closest person to me is 35, 40. At the youngest, literally the youngest. It's really surprising because I know Harley's been trying to make a big push right now to millennials and things like that, but it's just, it's kind of eye-opening to see, you know, here I am, a 29-year-old, in a ocean of gray hair. Harley definitely has some work to do ahead of them to win us back, that's for sure. Alright, boys and girls, Berlin Biker is officially out. Okay, officially done riding Harley Davidson's for the day. And I had quite the fun, quite the fun indeed. I rode three bikes, I rode the all of them 2018 models, model year, the 48 Special, which was a very nice 1200cc bike with some ape hanger bars, maybe not ape hangers, I'm not even sure what they're called. Um, I'm just gonna turn left to rat. I wasn't paying attention. For that bike, I had quite a lot of... Sorry, I'm listening to my navigation as I'm doing this. Something I haven't done in a while since the last four bikes I rode. A little bit of a wheelie. Yay! Wheelie! So I rode the 48 Special. Um, I will throw the clip of that biatch now.
then I rode the bike that I really wanted to come to. Oh god, I forgot the name of it again. Speedster? No, Roadster. Oh, I messed that up. The Roadster. The Roadster was a 1200cc bike, hard suspension, a little cafe-esque. It was a dream to ride. It was, honestly, I've been looking, that was only the Harley that I was really, really looking forward to riding. And it was, honestly, it was exactly what I wanted it to be. It was a Triumph Thruxton competitor in my mind. It was an absolute blast to ride. It had a good power. It felt extremely well made. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed riding that bike. Um, and then I rode the Iron 883, which is the first of the 883 engine of the three bikes that I rode. The Boys and girls, sorry about that slight interruption. I ran out of a GoPro battery and I also basically ran out of gas. So it's a good time for me to stop, pull over, change the battery out, and fill the tank up. Back to what I was saying about the three Harley Davidsons that I was riding today. All of them were better than I expected, honestly. The Roadster, by far my favorite of the three bikes, has me thinking a lot about what the next bike purchase could be for the Berlin Biker. Um, but there are more about, more of that to come later. I'm gonna put that down. All right, now we're on to the coffee shop. Coffee shop! Well, it's a warm one today. Um, the event was very well done. Um, really cool, lots of smart, fun people 
talked to two different people who were very, very nice. One gentleman, um, I believe his name is Robert. It was kind of hard to understand. Um, but we spoke for a while about the different bikes that we rode, and he was telling me about a few different events that he's going to go to in the next few weeks. Then we started talking about the United States, and how he's gonna go do a three-month trip starting in Milwaukee for the anniversary of Harley Davidson, and then he's going to head to the West Coast down, and then he's gonna drop the bike off somewhere, and then he's gonna go head home to Germany for a few months over winter. Then he's gonna come back to the States, pick it up in March, and then do the other side of the country, which is just amazing. It just sounds so cool. Like, what a badass plan. This dude was like, he had some money a bit. He had a Rolex on. He had some really cool, some cool silver jewelry and shit. But the guy was a cool guy. We had some good conversations. The event was cool. I'm super happy that I was able to ride those three bikes. I learned a lot more about actually riding a Harley and what to, just a different kind of riding. Right, a little more relaxed style of riding. A little more, I don't know, it's just different. It's fun, it's always fun to change. Always fun to try new things. And the V-twins of the Americans are quite different. A little heavier, I'll give you that. Um, but there is some acceleration and the fact that those bikes have to be so heavy and they still feel like they have a good acceleration, this shows a lot. But now I'm like, oh man, you gotta take one of those V-twins out and throw it into a fucking trellis frame body. And you got yourself a race bike. And then I was thinking, wait, 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 that's what Buell did basically did, right? They took those big ass 110 Harley engines and put them into a really lightweight cage. Yeah. Race car. All right, that's cool, you be a dick. So that turned red quick. Wasn't expecting that on God and Wobbles. You go to the coffee shop. Um, but that's kind of it. That's it, guys. It was a hell of an event. I want to thank Harley Davidson of Germany, Harley Davidson of Potsdam for allowing me to come down and test out a few bikes. If I had a little more energy in me today and I didn't have plans tomorrow and tonight, I would definitely kept riding. Um, but what a cool event. Appreciate all the kind of manufacturers who host these events. You have no idea how much appreciated they are. It's not just a time for us to go and get hot dogs and talk about bikes. It's a time for us to do some serious motorcycle shopping. And I know that's exactly why you want it, right? So always the bikes are always top of mind when you're ready to pull that trigger. And I don't have a trigger to pull yet, but I'm dumb enough that some days I might just find that trigger and pull it. And I'll join one of these families of bikes. Who knows? Who knows? But now I'm just kind of heading back to Berlin. Heading back to Berlin. I was noticing something the other day about this. It's like no longer black. It's now like copper. It's really interesting. The sun basically killed the color of the anodization away. Um, but it's fine because it's 20 bucks. I wasn't expecting it to look beautiful for the rest of its life. Uh, honestly, it's more than more than made up for it. I gotta figure out what to do with it. I throw a bunch of stickers on it. Maybe I find a vinyl wrap that's an American flag and a bald eagle doing stuff. Ooh, New York nails. Oh, welcome to New York nails. But all right, guys, I think that's it right now for a biker. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. It means a lot. If you haven't seen the other three videos of the Harley Davidson test drives that I did of the 48 Special, the Roadster, and the Iron 883, please make sure to watch those. Links will be below in the bio. And of course, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, that would mean a lot as I'm on the ultimate journey to break 500 subscribers and then on the ultimate journey to break 1,000 subscribers and start making that Casey Neistat YouTube money. Just kidding. I'm never going to leave my day job. It's all right. I'm going to keep making content though because I enjoy it. And I enjoy talking about motorcycles and I enjoy learning more and more about Adobe Premiere and making videos and shooting them. So you don't have to worry. Content will always be there for those who know where to look. That's a Harry Potter quote in some capacity. I'm trying to remember what it is. Like, 
I think it's Harry, no, it's, it's Dumbledore talking to Harry about something will always be available for those who like open their eyes or for those who who look or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making shit up. Maybe I'm just thinking like that would be something Dumbledore would say. So I'm just going to assume he said it. <sighs> All right. I should have like an entire Harry Potter conversation. Oh, okay, cool. Yep, slam on our brakes here, lady. You can do that. All right, guys. I think that's it for right for me right now. Berlin Biker is officially out. Bye, guys.